Hello, hello everybody and welcome back. This is part of my Pride collection for Sims 4 that I will be showcasing for builds and create a sim. So we have here our trans flag representation. The video before will be the representation for the actual sim that I go in more detail with. But today, this is me showing you how I created this trans flag inspired house. Stay tuned. Okay, so let's get into it. So I will say hi key. I had no idea how I was going to approach like the actual build aspect of it. I just knew I wanted to make a house that was like more cozy than not because as trans people, the least they can get is coziness. <laughs> so here I am just starting to build the deck. Um, I really, really, really want so badly to perfect a curved deck. <laughs> I don't really know why. I just really want a curved deck so bad. So I have to be totally brutally honest for a moment. If there's something that isn't a strong point for me when it comes to building houses and whatever, it's roofs. Roofs, that's the plural for roof, right? <laughs> I hope so. Uh, yeah, I am not that great when it comes to roofing and whatnot. I can make it work. So high key, what was just cut out was my sad attempt at making a roof for this house because I was trying to do something quirky make like a curved kind of roof for it some type of like aesthetic because they're like you know swaying into the next stage of their life and i was like bro i cannot disrespect the trans community with the roof that i made for this originally so i just went with basic a basic roof structure for it and i just really felt like i'll let everything else shine but i need to just make sure the top of this house looks somewhat decent because why not typically when it comes to making tiny houses small houses micro houses the tiny house category a lot of times during the series you'll notice that i primarily will make a small house which is up to a hundred tiles. Why? Because I want to create the most amount of space with the smallest house size. I don't really have much else besides that reason. <laughs> no, I just think it's fun to create tiny houses as a whole. I think tiny houses are something that are very underrepresented in Sims. So them creating a tiny house pack Truthfully, it's one of my favorite packs ever. Y'all might disagree, but guess what? I don't care. No, I do care. Let me just stop right there. I do care. No, I really think it's so much fun to give myself the extra level of like a challenge. How to create the most expressive style of house for the theme that I'm going for with the most limited amount of space. So a couple other builds of mine that are tiny houses in the category of tiny houses relating to the pride series you will notice some are uh micro houses or um i can't think small houses oh well, small houses tiny houses and micro houses you will notice sometimes i will make a actual tiny house why because i just really wanted to <laughs> like sure i could have made this the the trans flag inspired house i could have made that as a small house or i did make a small house let me rewind i could have made that as a tiny house or a micro house but i don't know i just feel like because we're specifically doing the trans community and that is like a very very hugely misunderstood misrepresented community by default i'm like let me give them the most mansion style of a tiny house and if it works then it works so you see me here struggling with house or uh, roof related stuff. I'm trying my best. I am trying. It's not really perfect coming through, but I will get it towards later on in the video. You will see. The main thing that I struggle with when it comes to 
roofing houses as a whole whether no matter the size is I want to make sure like you'll see in the top area like I want to make sure that all of the peaks line up perfectly or if it's not gonna line up then at least makes sense does that always work no but when it does work it's a perfect day so that's one of the real focuses I have when trying to do roofs is making sure the peaks align making sure stretching out the what's called the eaves the little side bottom panel link thingy making sure that's stretched out in a way that makes sense it's not covering the house style too too much but also you don't want it just stuck to the edge of the house so so far I'm liking how this is looking yeah I don't know <laughs> as you can tell from the start of this video but if not it's okay the trans flag is represented with five lines of colors the top line and bottom line is blue the second line and fourth line is pink and then the white line is the middle line that was kind of my inspiration regarding like you'll see later on i'll make the roof of this house blue that was kind of my inspiration because like top to bottom kind of vibes but I also wanted to make sure that wherever I did have white anything, whether inside or outside, it's really nicely represented with pink and blue accents. Of course, not everything's going to be just white, just pink, and just blue. Some things are going to be like colors that complement it well. But overall, my main focus was to make sure it stays as much in the trans flag as possible. I was really vibing with the idea of having this pink, white, and like a gray brick wall you see me doing here. I was really vibing with the idea of having that be an accent wall, like accent wall style in relation to the white walls you see me putting on. And I really liked how it played out overall. It gives a nice look of like the blue, the pink, and the white but kind of in a creative way that way I didn't just have just solid all white walls or solid all pink walls I really want it to be like one area has the blue yes but then the relationship between the walls all around I don't know I just thought it was cool to add some of these pink and gray accents with it especially since the pink wall that I used has the white panels on it I can't talk right now oh my gosh <laughs> I don't know I really liked how that was looking and I was definitely like hmm if I'm gonna have fencing around it should probably still be within those colors right 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 and hey I made my curved deck it's small but I made it so love it I was struggling for a little bit trying to find what type of door I wanted for the primary outside doors like the front door back door whatnot I was struggling a little bit because I wanted it to of course be a color that's within the trans flag but I didn't want it to look cheesy I wanted it to still look appropriate for the house style so I was kind of struggling a little bit I'm like do I want to try this one mm, no but then I fell onto this one which I love this door in particular because of the fact that on what would be the outside portion it has flowers and my main goal for the trans flag house this one is to do like almost like a whimsical like fairy-ish cottage-ish modern vibe because some of the people well many people that I know in my life that are trans are literally some of the most magical people that I've ever interacted with so within the trans sim that I made as well as the trans flag inspired house that I'm making I wanted to throw in as much qualities of my friends and people that I'm around that that are trans to kind of give a little hey thanks for being cool friend <laughs> I wanted to really showcase what they mean to me so I'm like you know what flowers blooming growing into its next stage there's probably somewhere along the way where I'm like ooh butterflies transformation like there's a lot of subliminal stuff you'll see so with that door in particular I'm like oh yeah I need to have this one absolutely and later on you'll really see me put some strong emphasis into the gardening area 
that is intentional. I really just went overboard with the concept of like flowers, magical, the um, vegetation around, that type of stuff. So you'll notice that. I also want to throw in there that I am well aware that the sim that I made that would be the trans representation sim. Her name is Phoenix. I am well aware that Phoenix, her aesthetic does not match in any way to the house that I'm building. Do I care? No. Because I know either way, there are going to be people that download her. There are going to be people that download this house. And they might not necessarily have Phoenix living in this house. So I'm aware of that. I didn't want the sim to just by default match the aesthetic of the house. Like if it happens for other parts of the series, fair enough. But I that wasn't really my main focus. I really, 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 really wanted to get very like uh, metaphorical with it, with it, which I'm not <laughs> good with metaphors to begin with, but I tried. So real quick, in case you haven't seen the video I made for Phoenix, I gave her a very like punk, rebellion type of style because if we're being totally just blunt i personally feel that trans people especially trans people of color are some of the people within the queer community that have to fight the biggest or most or whatever the most grand gesture they can't really hide their identity not like anyone should of course but they can't really hide their identity because so much of their identity is physical no matter how much um within their transitioning stages they are showcasing it physically they really have to fight whether they look too much one way or another way by societal standards society isn't going to ever be happy with them whether they look too masculine look too feminine look too androgynous they're never going to be happy so i intentionally made phoenix very just like f the system screw that type of vibe because trans people do have to fight they have to fight for the right and it's really unfortunate that in modern day society that's still the case when it's literally just like just accept them like it's not that hard just be nice so yes i'm aware that this house does not match phoenix's aesthetic and that's fine i am perfectly fine with that Here I am currently trying to figure out how I want to set up the interior design of the house now. So first I'm working on the walls. I definitely knew that in the main uh, like living area, I wanted to keep the walls white, mainly because I knew that a lot of the stuff within it would be the multicolor like vibe. So I didn't want it to clash too, too much with everything else. Cause you can see that the windows are like a very, very light blue. That's intentional. I just don't want, I don't like when things look too, too busy, even though you will see that things get very busy quickly. <laughs> so I guess I'm a walking contradiction, whatever. But I just wanted to make sure that the main living area, because there's gonna be so much pops of color, that at least there was breathing space within it. This fence that I'm laying down right now, you'll notice in like other builds that I make, this is one of my favorite fences because it's short. So, I mean, quite frankly, I actually don't really know if Sims can actually walk over it, but I don't care because I'm just gonna put plants there. Uh, it's one of my favorites because it's really, really short and looks very accented, but also it blends well for the most part when you're putting the fence down for the front area and lining it up to the stairs. I know it kind of like smudges into it a little bit. I know that and I don't really care because it just looks a little more cohesive this way and it kind of gives it a little more defined like this is a pathway you're noticing right now. I really want a reason to use this plant right there and I don't think I end up using it in this build which makes me so sad because I'm like oh that's a pretty pink and sure it's not the same shade as like trans flag pink but it's just so pretty and I want a reason to use it. So you're gonna try to, you're gonna see me trying to find any way around to do that. 
Oh yeah, that tree, those trees look dead because I was a dum-dum and preset the world to springtime. So I think I'm, I end up putting in like a cheat or something to be like summertime or something like that. I think that's what I end up doing. I don't think I end up using that pink plant. Rest in peace to my wishes of using that pink plant. Well, would you look at that? If it isn't me Googling how to change the seasons and about to put in a cheat code to make it summertime. Watch, see, yep, boom. Boom, 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 boom. I did that. That was the first time I ever used that cheat for the seasons. And you know what? I might just do it again if I forget to just make it summertime. Not like I like presetting it to summertime. I usually like doing spring just because it's the start of the seasons displayed. But I don't know. Summertime, it just shows the plants in the most fullest of blooms. So, I end up just keeping it that way, which is whatever. I mean, literally, I don't care. It's whatever. But at least it makes it easier to see, like, okay, these are the plants. This is what it looks like at its prettiest. Blah, blah, blah. Here I am lining up the plants outside in a way that is the same, like, color aspect with the trans flag so going from blue to pink pink to white white to pink and then back to blue i'm trying to see right now which plants just by default look nice outside and which plants also have the colors that i want i'm fine if the tonality of it is slightly off if it's like you know not a pastel pink but a little more of a fuchsia or like a vivid kind of pink or something like that i'm fine with that i literally if i were to if it were to come down to just like the exact tonality of it also I would never be able to build any of these types of houses with inspiration so this is what I'm doing over here figure out okay which plant do I want to use and where usually when it comes to putting plants outside against the house I like having that being something typically a little bit bigger or like more showcase show stopping show show something like plant so that's what you see me doing I like to kind of go like big into kind of smallish and then back to big at the outer edge next to the pre-made like sidewalk. I don't know. I don't always follow that rule, but I kind of like how it looks that way. I don't know how many of you all know, so I'm just gonna assume no one knows. When you're putting stuff down, in build mode if you do the cheat what is that? i believe it's um bb dot move objects and then once you press enter you know get out of the cheat screen or whatever and then you hold down alt i think or control um while holding on to an object that's how you're able to make it like freely move around instead of it being forced to lay within the blocks like the grids on the floor that's how you're able to freely move it around and it gives you a little more flexibility regarding like where to put stuff of course not everything is perfect you still can't put stuff completely out of the lines of the lot but it kind of makes it a little more creative and fun when doing builds if it doesn't have to be a hundred percent like on the grid it can be a little off and whatnot like how i'm curving it the cactus cacti ooh, around the curved part of the deck you see that i'm really trying to hide how that little bit of flooring over there is sticking through the underneath but I end up deleting it so it works out I'm pretty sure I go back in and use like the airbrush the uh, floor ground airbrush stone thing yep yep see I know myself so well <laughs> I just end up doing that I just really wanted something that looked like pavement or something block stone something like that in the front area to kind of continue on the pathway so, and plus, I can hide it better. It's not like sticking out. Sometimes, you know, as we all know, Sims can glitch. So, that's what I'm doing here. I like to make it square so that way it fits within the fencing area. And, yeah, that's what I'm doing.
So one of the things that I absolutely love that The Sims has is a search bar because I know Sims has things or have things, had things, has things, Lord. <laughs> But it all, I don't always remember like where it would be categorized as and whatnot. So on just about all of the pride collection houses you'll see, I try to incorporate the flag that I'm representing on there. I don't know, maybe partially to remind myself of the color pattern, but also because why not? If Sims has it, I might as well fly it, right? Right, right, right? Yeah. So. You'll notice I'll usually put it in the front of the house or like maybe on the side or something. That was totally intentional. Here I am working on the baño, the bathroom. <laughs> Typically, when it comes to making any type of micro, tiny or small house, um, I like to use one of the showers that isn't necessarily like a um, like a tub or like out of something that's like a permanent fixture there. I like having it be like the little connected to the wall hose kind of thing, if that makes sense. I find that A, it makes the bathroom look a little bit more spacious and B, it can allow a little bit more finagling with said space allowed. So, I mean, the only time I'll really put a tub in or a shower head connected to a tub is when I know that that family, like that household is gonna have a family or like a dog, cause they need to watch the dog, they need to watch the kids, whatnot. But otherwise, since this is one individual person, I really just wanted to make sure that that was just focused on the one person. And here I am doing the kitchen, trying to figure out which counter will look the best. You'll notice not too long after I put these counter counters down, I realized I absolutely despise how these counters look in this house setting. I thought it would give the look of like, ooh, whimsical, magical, all that stuff. But no, I think the style of it was clashing a little too much with the aesthetic I was going for, which is again, like a mixture of like fairy-like, cottage-like, still modern-ish. So I really like the vibe of these like more cottage-inspired houses, or whoa, counters. Like the, the what are they, cabinets? Oh my gosh, <laughs> the cabinets, which of course it is actually from the cottage pack, which you guys should get because it's amazing. And if you don't know, that little setting that it has for both the cabinets and the counters, it really creates some nice designs where it's not just the same one, 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 one cabinet and one, 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 one counter. It creates like, you know, the outer corner stuff, inner corner for counter space. Sometimes it's like rounded or squared off. So it kind of gives a little bit more of a like realistic vibe to the kitchen area itself or wherever you're going to have the counters. I don't know. Does it look better that way? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> so usually over the stove and the fridge is where I'll typically put the short uh, cabinet. But in this case... I really liked how the outer corner cabinet looked, so I just put that over the the stove. But usually I would have a shorter one over the stove because I like having the stove, like that hood area underneath. I don't recall if I put that in this one, <laughs> but I at least put the shorter one over the fridge. That way I can still put stuff on top of the fridge. And sure, yeah, it probably won't be functional, whatever I put up there. But again, aesthetics, it's so cute. So you see, even in this corner for the counter, I just, I don't know. I really like it. I really like how that type of stuff looks. This rug that I'm putting down currently from the Seasons Pack is absolutely one of my favorite rugs. I really just love all the print designs that come with it. Sure, yeah, a lot of them, of course, is weather related because it's from the Seasons Pack, but they really just went creative with the concept while they're adding certain like winter based holidays, the fact that it has like a rainbow one. I mean, it has all different types of themes, a spider web one, maybe for like holiday or uh, Halloween inspired. But I just went with the rainbow one because A, obviously it matches everything because it's part of the pride collection. But B, I felt like against the simplicity of everywhere else in that little area, it was a nice little pop of color. But that definitely is one of my favorite ones. 
really, Seasons is one of my favorite packs overall. I came across these lights that will end up being the main lights I use in this build because I was looking at the color options so I was like, oh my gosh, that kind of really sort of looks like the trans flag. It has the pink, it has the blue, and one would say that's yellowish or brownish. We're gonna pretend that it's white. But like, come on, it's so heckin' spot on. I had to use it, I had to use it for pretty much everywhere. And I'm not ashamed. Since this house is mainly designated for one sim, I just made it have one bedroom, one bathroom, combined kitchen, living room, and living room. But in some of my other houses where, how do I word it? The pairing of sims helps to showcase the, which part of the um, like LGBTQ uh, community I was focusing on, whether it's like, gay or lesbian, whatnot, uh, where, you know, lesbians would have two women and gay would have two men. Whoa, I just knocked over my mic. <laughs> my bad. Um, you know, for those ones, there might be a moment where I showcase multiple, like, maybe bedrooms or something. Um, I don't know. Maybe not necessarily with them. But <laughs> in general, when I do make tiny houses, I like to make them have two bedrooms, one bathroom kind of vibe. Um, maybe, maybe because, you know, the couple that I make or whoever might end up having a kid at some point. So I want to make sure that there's a bedroom. I like the added challenge of making sure there's two defined bedrooms. Even if there's literally just a bed in that room, it's a bed room. Y'all, this is so minuscule, but I feel like I need to add it because I'm so hyper fixated on it right now. I noticed my voice, I lost my voice a couple weeks ago, like absolutely completely lost my voice. And mind you, I'm a cosmetologist. I work in a salon. I'm required to talk. On top of that, I am in a choir and I sing within the choir two days a week. So <laughs> having absolutely no voice and trying to be in these groups where I need to talk, it was very hard. So while I have, for the most part, my speaking voice back, my singing voice is still pretty shot. And I don't know, I feel like there's like a slight raspiness or like crackliness to my voice at times, like that. <laughs> so I feel like I'm almost going through like another puberty where I'm like, oh lordy, what is going on with my voice? So I'm sorry if I sound a little crackle crackle at times. That's not the intention, and I'm staying hydrated, and I'm drinking a ton of tea, but it's just not on point. I'm currently trying to find decorations to put around the house that fit within the color theme, but also fit with the aesthetic that I'm going for. So you'll see me looking at a couple different like picture, painting, sculpture, whatever options to see like, oh, does this work? Maybe not. Let me see the size of this. Is this something that will look nice if I shrunk it down some? Stuff like that. My main focus was to go for something floral based, some type of like nature based. Yeah, I really have this mental idea of what I want, like what I want to use aesthetically to showcase the trans community. And again, very much, you know, blooming, transformative, from one to another kind of vibe. So that's why you'll see a lot of floral and planty stuff, whatnot. I don't know, I know everyone's different and I'm not trying to say every single trans person is a flower, but hey, is that the worst thing to be called a flower? You smell good, you pretty, you look good anywhere. Does that really indicate the worst thing in the world? You let me know. We also peeped the fact that I put in a closet over there with an open door to indicate this person within the community is coming out the closet. 
I am a genius. Here I am currently trying to figure out what curtains do I want. So like growing up when I would play Sims in my early childhood, I did not put curtains down. Like the concept of curtains, I was like, no. Which I mean, I don't know why because I love curtains. And I think they're so pretty and they're pretty useful for covering up a window. But I guess I don't know. It's like, hmm, well, since these curtains are functional, like, do I really care for it? The answer is yes. Yes, I do care for it. <laughs> I felt like with the curtains that I put on the windows, they should probably be something where it's very simple in pattern, but the like color of it is part of the flags, especially since it's going to be put up on some white walls too. I wanted them to have the pop, the pop of color around, so that's what you see me doing here, just playing around, seeing like what curtain style looks best for these types of windows. Clearly some of them are a fail, but it's okay. Ooh, a rainbow one that I'm gonna use later on, ha uh ha. -huh. But for now, let's focus back on the curtains for the trans flag. <laughs> When it comes to deciding which room I currently want to decorate, I have no like rhythm regarding how I end up choosing this room to start working on. Now I'm going to go to this room. No. I was putting up the curtains and I was like, I should probably put something in the bathroom. So that's what I'm doing. Moving around the shower just to see like, all right, does this fit better here? What I had in mind, what not. I really just bounce around so much. And I know that probably makes things a little confusing at times but whatever, okay, whatever, it's okay. Let me ask y'all this. I heard through the grapevine of TikTok that people in the UK, a lot of their apartment, housing, whatever, has the washer and dryer or at least like one of the devices in the kitchen. Is that true? Like, I would have put this washer dryer in the bathroom if there was space for it, but there's no space for it. And I really didn't want there to be like the outdoor, like wash the clothes in a bucket and then hang it up on the clothing line. I really didn't feel like doing that. So can someone also confirm in the comments if that is true that it's a common thing to have like a washer and or dryer within the kitchen area, please. I mean, I feel like it makes sense with tiny houses because you really have to put things where you can put things. But I, I, I just need that confirmation for research purposes, please and thank you. So for anyone that's been playing The Sims for extended amount of time, or at least has played past Sims, who else has low-key, like, <laughs> PTSD from not putting a smoke detector in your build, and then your Sim, like, cuts up a salad, and then it sets the house on fire, and you're like, holy guacamole, I did not put a smoke detector in the house. And of course, when you don't put a smoke detector in the house and your house catches on fire, you can't pause the game to be like, oh, let me put one in. No, 
So you literally have to make your sim take the L and either fight the fire, force them to run outside, even though they'll probably still run back to the fire, or die. So I cannot express how many times I checked to make sure, did I put a smoke detector? Did I put a smoke detector? It's almost like how like in past sims they would have the burglar and you're like, OMG, did I put the security system in the household? Probably not. And now I hear the scary music that's giving me low TP, low key, P uh, oh my gosh, low key PTSD. And now my house is getting robbed and I just have to watch it. So to anyone that has had that experience, that is for you. I put the smoke detector in there for you. And of course, since Sims 4 doesn't have robbers anymore, I guess that's out of the question, but we can at least make sure we keep a Sim alive by having a smoke detector. And while it is such the tiniest little detail, I cannot express how much I felt like if I'm gonna build a house that represents the trans community, I need to put tea and a kettle there. <laughs> it made sense in my mind. I don't know. I'm like, you know what? I feel like my friends that are trans, they're a type where I could show up at their place of residency and almost all of them would make me tea. Not in like a eh, UIT and Krimpies kind of way, har har har. But no, like, let me comfort you. Let me give you something that's low-key witchy, but also low-key healing. And we're going to consume this and have a good time. I don't know. It made sense in my mind. So, tea? It <laughs> made tea for trans. Ha ha ha. I don't know. I don't know. I've gotten in the habit of taking one of these, like the... Was it a, like a casserole kind of pot, baking pot, whatever you want to call it. I've gotten the habit of placing that on top of the stove because even though it isn't like functional, I don't know, it just looks so cute on top of there. <laughs> so this one is from uh, the cottage pack. I just love it. I love it so much. It makes it the build feel extra cozy, especially when you have these pastries in there. I'm genuinely such a fan of how much pride related stuff like build stuff are in the sims like so many things are so subliminal uh, and like low-key like okay we have the flag there of course but that mailbox for that to be the trans flag colors I'm like oh that is so perfect we are absolutely absolutely adding it to this build some things like I really don't care if it looks like it clashes if it means that it's the appropriate flag colors while I don't think this is necessarily the case where it clashes I'm just like I don't know I just saw it and I was like yeah I need to use this so I'm trying to currently find which chair I want to have be like the chair you sit on on the deck or the porch whatever so figure out which one I was like you know what this flamingo one pink blue and white I'm going to use it From this point, the things that I will be working on will primarily be outside stuff that includes the pool that's being built, the garden that really over-dramatize and over-emphasize that, uh, landscaping, vegetation, just overall outdoorsy, decorative, living stuff. I genuinely don't really know why I made a pool, seeing as, respectfully, like, pools don't have anything to do with really much of anybody. I mean, I guess I do 
if you're a swimmer, okay, Michael Phelps, we hear you. But I mean, as far as the aesthetic for this build, I know it doesn't contribute much, but it was kind of a cool opportunity to use the colors of the flag in various ways. So like, you know, the water being the sparkly blue one, the walls being pink, the turtle being like, I know it's like a teal, but we're gonna pretend it's blue. The turtle being like blue and white, the trim around being white, the, you know, pool floaty, stuff like that. I don't know. I just thought it was a really good idea to put it in there. And it works. It ended up working, so I am not mad. I would just like to thank my mother and my father for creating such a creative genius. Thank you, mom, and thank you, dad, because I just thought of the coolest little lineup to decorate the pool area. I'm like, let me take these vases with flowers in it and make it look like the trans flag. Boom, I am a genius. Or just have too much time on my hands, but it's cool. I'm really trying to get so stinking creative with how to go about, you know, decorating the area, making it fit the overall aesthetic of like the house style while also not looking dumb. <laughs> so I'm really getting creative over here, you know, I'm like, oh, blue grill, white panels, this works, or oh, this has a, I don't know, blue flowers in it and whatnot. It's just, it's a nice challenge, but I'm also like, dang, this ended up being pretty hefty of decorations around, but I am not ashamed. So over here is where I'm starting my gardening area for this lot. I was able to find these shelves that had both blue, pink, and white. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> duh, let me line it up against the house and make it look like a trans flag because that's why we're here, right? <laughs> so you just see me adjusting the position of it, make sure it all fits in there. I don't know what came about me to do it this way. like why line everything up this side I don't know 
I really don't know, <laughs> but it ends up working out. So you'll see as the video progresses a little bit more, we're almost there, that we're heading towards the gardening area. And that's when I end up getting very elaborate with it. I end up putting down a lot of different like, um, of course, just about all of it being not functional except for like the flower beds itself and the vertical garden. But I was able to set up, like I didn't want it to look too, too clean, pristine. I kind of like the little messy aspect of how I end up putting all the like gardening supplies together. So it made sense to me. <laughs> but you'll see me start to do that. I also thought it was a really good idea to take this umbrella and like, I don't know, put it in the fence. <laughs> Cause I wanted to incorporate this umbrella somehow. But I'm like, where could I put it? There wasn't really a lot of space. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna put it there. It makes sense to me. Okay, okay. As I was looking through and seeing which of the outside wall, like decorative stuff that was there, I was like, oh my gosh, I see this flower bed looking thing and it has the colors we need. So of course, as I do best, I put it all around the house. Also, the little voice in my mind told me this house needs a wind, a wind turbine. So I was like, all right, voice. This house needs a wind turbine. Alrighty. One of the absolute best little Sims hack that I've learned thanks to, I don't remember which TikToker, they put down a vase and then put a plant inside that looks like it would fit in there. Once I saw that, I was like, oh yeah, I'm stealing this idea. So I've done them for other builds before, but now I'm showcasing what I've learned. So I was like, huh, you know what? I actually found the flowers that'll fit in it. That works out well, yay. But that's a little, you know, life hack thing on Sims you um, can do. I think you just have to make sure the bb.move objects cheat is on and you should be good. And like hold the, I don't remember if it was control or alt, but whichever one lets you freely move around something, depending on how it's positioned in the game. Yeah, it made sense to me, so enjoy that.
this is where I end up going just extra, 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 extra crazy with like the gardening decoration setup stuff, whatever. This is where I'm like, yeah, it's about to get pretty overcrowded. And you know what? I'm here for it. Let's just do it. Let's just look like, you know, maybe the person that lives here gets very distracted easily. So they can't always put something away because then they'll forget where they put it and whatnot. Like, yeah, it just needs every type of gardening supply over here. So that is exactly what I'm filling in with right now. This is another moment where I'm like, OMG y'all, your girl's a genius. Another decorative thing that comes with the pink, the white, and the blue. And I'm like, yep, I'm gonna set this up in a way to where it looks like the flag, again. As I was looking around for other outdoor decoration stuff, I saw some, like a portrait where I was like, oh, this like galaxy looking one would be cool. So I put that in and now I'm just kind of putting in little fine tuning, little homey kind of detail stuff. It makes it feel a little more like <laughs> someone actually lives there. So that's what I'm doing now, finding anything and everything that's rainbow affiliated and or just making it look more personal. So to nobody's surprise, I found myself going back into the garden and decorating the area because why not? <laughs> I was like, let me put some stuff on top of these shelves and just really go crazy with it. Just overdo the decorations just go hard with it because again why not i want it to feel cozy and livable and someone really is out there passionate about the garden why not I want to express how helpful it is playing around with like debug objects and finding little hidden stuff along the way. So some of my favorite treat, whoa, cheats I like to use is bb.moveobjects. Of course, it's not going to unlock anything, but that helps you move things around a little more freely. So I like that one. I like bb.showhiddenobjects bb.show live edit to ob oh my gosh i said that wrong wrong hold on show live edit objects i also like to use uh bb.ignore gameplay unlocks entitlement those are kind of my favorite ones regarding finding hidden objects and utilizing the search bar in build mode saves me a lot of time from finding like one particular thing in overcrowded you know category So that little thing that you see me hovering over and about to find, find a little table for, um, that's a little s'mores kit. 
I've never actually tested to see if it's functional, playable, if you can actually use it. I've never tested it. But in my mind, it just made sense to be like, oh, s'mores kit at a trans house. Of course, that makes sense. And it's my build. If it makes sense to me, I'm happy about that. <laughs> So now I'm here just finalizing some terrain related stuff. I find that it makes it look a little more lived in when you have like dirt, like obvious dirt underneath the swings, dirt around like uh, trees or like poles, like a tiny little bit of dirt, um, dirt around a gardening area. I find that like just making the ground all too solid just makes like like solid green i don't know, just makes it look fake like i really want to try to make this look as realistic but fun as possible so i'll even play around with like the terrain like with stones to look like walkways um yeah kind of give a contrast plus it gives another vibe to like flooring related patterns so you'll see me just tweaking some areas here and there doing that minimal stuff that i personally think makes a difference I apologize so much. My niece is not happy right now. She is straight up not having a good time. <laughs> but currently I'm figuring out what traits I want for this lot. I decided to go with the great soil or whatever type of soil. Um, so that way we have a good transition in the flowers and plants that are growing. <laughs> I decided to also give it the sunny aspect. That way, you know, they stay energized and whatnot. And I was really like lingering over the thought of like maybe a party place. Maybe because they're the life of the party, but I was like, you know what? The trans people I know in my life, they make me feel like I'm at home. They make me feel like I'm at peace. I never have to feel like I'm being like, you know, negatively judged. And, you know, overall, I just really hope that the build, the sim that I created, the whole representation that I did for the trans community, I really hope it did. I did some justice with it. I hope so. <laughs> I really put so much into it. So here's the final little look around. I currently don't know how to make camera views for like overall views of things look to look fancy and whatnot. So you're just gonna have to deal with this. But I really hope you guys enjoyed. I really, really hope you guys enjoyed the build. You know, the last video being the sim. If you have any other ideas for at any really point of time while I'm recording my streams and builds and whatnot, please let me know in the comments. I would really appreciate that. Thank you all so very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Happy Pride. And stay tuned for my other houses and sims for the community. I wish I could be a little more elaborate with, you know, so many subcategories, but it's sims. I'm trying my best. I don't feel like I'm leaving you out. Not intentional. <laughs> All right, see y'all next time. Bye.